So this is a video overview of how to determine whether molecules are polar or not. You'll remember in uh, previous videos that um, we've, we've taken a look at the drops on a penny and we know that uh, some molecules stick to each other better than others. We know that when we looked at the evaporation rate in the video I made about evaporation rates, which is uh, the intermolecular attraction video back on April 30th, uh, we learned that uh, some molecules attract each other more than others, and so some evaporate slower because of that. And we have, I made a little video about um, ba uh, valence electrons and polarity, and then another one about how to draw dot diagrams, so how to draw pictures of molecules. So hopefully you practice some of those, like uh, if you're going to take a look at this one from Purdue. So if you're going to draw, we'll just draw a couple of those, and then I'm, I had some others I was going to draw. So let's review how to draw a dot diagram real quick. Let me uh, pull up uh, the webcam, which looks like that. We'll pull it over here. Oh, no, we won't do that. We'll do this. Pull this tab over so I can have it open. Go back to the Purdue University. By the way, in case you're wondering, that is Purdue University over in Indiana. Um, so if you're going to draw BEF2, the first step in drawing valence electrons, according to the valence electron movie that I made, was to... Uh, first, let me say that again. The first step in drawing a dot diagram, according to the uh, movie that I made earlier, was to add the valence electrons. So you need to pull out a periodic table, and periodic tables are easy to come by. You just go right here. And right here's a periodic table, here's beryllium, and it has two valence electrons, because it's in the second column. So our beryllium number would be two. And the fluorine number, you look back at the periodic table, and it's over here in this seventh column, so it has seven valence electrons. So that would be seven times two, which is 14. Now yeah, right up here, seven times two. So our total number of valence electrons is 16. Second thing you do is draw a skeleton structure. So you'd have a BE bonded to an F and a BE bonded to an F like that. Um, the element that has more open spots goes in the middle, or the least electronegative goes in the middle, or the one that's closer to the middle of the periodic table goes in the middle. Well, closer to the middle of the periodic table is kind of hard to tell between beryllium and fluorine. But you know that fluorine is way more electronegative than beryllium, so you put the less electronegative in the middle. And you also know that beryllium has like six open spots and fluorine only has one. So because beryllium has two, and they theoretically could have eight in the outer shell. Now, in this case, in that same video, I told you that uh, most things tend to obey the octet rule. Octet means eight electrons in the outer shell. Except for beryllium, beryllium will only end up with four in its outer shell, and boron with six, and hydrogen, while well, I'm talking about these, hydrogen only ever has two in its outer shell. Oops, you can't see what I just wrote down. So octet means eight. Beryllium only will be happy with four in its outer shell. Boron six, hydrogen two. Other things you just have to, they, you just assume they're gonna go for eight in the outer shell. All right, so I have 16 electrons. We drew the skeleton structure. The third step in drawing dot diagrams, according to the previous video, was to subtract two electrons per bond. So I would take away, oh, two times two is four, isn't it? So 16 minus four would give me 12 electrons to put in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Now, normally you would wanna put eight around the center atom too, and we wouldn't have enough electrons to go around. But in, since this is beryllium, it's happy with four. So beryllium is a happy camper. And so we are finished with the dot diagram for that compound. Now I want you to notice that the shape of this compound is determined by the repelling of the electrons in the bonds. So this pair of electrons is negative and this pair of electrons is negative. Remember the bonds are two electrons. And so since they're negative, they repel each other and want to get as far apart as they can. And 180 degrees is as far as they can get. So now we're down to which, elect, which um, 
of these two atoms is more electronegative. Well, it's fluorine. So that means that the electrons are going to move toward the fluorine atoms that are in this bond. And they're going to move toward the fluorine atom in that bond. That means that this molecule will be negative. I'll put it in a different color so we don't get all these same colors together. Here's what I'm looking for. So it'll be negative on this end. It'll be negative on this end and positive in the middle. So the there is no positive end and negative end. Both ends of this molecule are negative. So we would say this molecule is non-polar. In order to be polar, you have to have a negative end and a positive end. And we're going to do some more examples, so don't panic yet. Now, the easiest way to think about polarity of molecules, whether the molecules are polar or not, is to consider the direction that the air electrons move according to these arrows. So if you visualize, the fluorine is pulling on the electrons that are tying it to the beryllium. It's like, think of them as a little rope that's tying them together. And the fluorine is pulling in the opposite direction over here. It's kind of like they're playing tug of war. And if they're both pulling with the same amount of force in opposite directions, then the beryllium would just sit still. So we would say that the vectors, these are called the charge vectors. Charge vector. Vector is a force with direction in physics. In chemistry, this is not really a force per se, but think of it as a charge vector where the electrons are moving that way and they're moving that way and they're like little imaginary um, forces pulling on each other. So if the charge vectors cancel, I'll write it down, vectors cancel, that is non-polar. The molecule will not have a positive and negative end. But if the vectors are additive, If the vectors are additive, that makes the molecule polar. So let's look at an example of what that one might look like. Go back to the Purdue site and see if they've got any of those. Oops, where was the Purdue site? Here we go. All right, so let's, let's look at um, PBr5. Yeah, well, yeah, PBr5, I guess that'll be okay. So we'll do that one. So you put P. BR5, you write it down, you draw your picture, so you put the P in the middle, and you put the BRs around it. Now this is going to have too many electrons around the center, but you still radiate it out from the center. Okay, so you had a BR going up, and a BR going down. Now I've tried to draw that in, a, in such a way that it kind of shows the three-dimensional structure of this molecule. So think of this as a triangle, and then you've got another, you got a top to the triangle up there. So you see how it shapes up, and then the, the, you have a mirror image on the bottom. All right, so between P and BR, which one is more electronegative? Well, we'll take a look at the periodic table. Of course, remember, on the website, I put an electronegativity chart, so you can always just go back to that chart and look it up. Um, it's on the homework, the coronavirus homework page. So we have Br here, we got P here. Bromine's further to the right, so I would anticipate that the bromine is a little bit more electronegative than the phosphorus. We could, could go back and just check that real quick. And uh, here's the electronegativity values. And Br is 2.8 and P is 2.2. So bromine is a little bit more electronegative than the phosphorus is. So that means then that the electrons will be pulled toward the bromine. So in this triangle, they're going to be pulled like that, kind of like a peace sign or, or a Mercedes symbol. And these bond angles, those are all going to be 60 degrees, one third of the, of the 180 degrees in a triangle. So it's kind of like you got three ropes pulling in, out in opposite directions. Aren't they going to cancel? Then you got this guy pulling that way and the bromine here pulling that way, and they're going to cancel. So this, all these charge vectors cancel, so that molecule would be non-polar. Okay, so that's how you determine polarity of a molecule. So we're gonna, I thought we'd do five or six examples. 
So I have written some down over here that uh, I was going to do, so let's just take a look at these. Oh, you know, something I didn't do on this was put the actual electrons in, so I skipped those steps because I started thinking about the next step. So let's go ahead and put the electrons in as well. So I've got five for, for phosphorus. Remember, phosphorus is, um, let's just close that. I'll click clicking on it. Okay, so phosphorus on the periodic table is right over here. That's P. It's got five valence electrons. And uh, bromine has seven while I'm here, so I just go ahead and tell you that. All right, going back to Purdue. So we've got uh, seven, but there's five atoms, so seven times five is 35. So we'd have five plus 35, which gives me 40 electrons. And then we would subtract two, four, six, eight, ten, because there are ten electrons already in the picture. Each bond is two electrons. So that gives us 30 to put in. We want everything to have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm counting six, but am I really going to have eight? Yeah, because two, four, six plus these two make eight. Two, four, six plus these two make eight. Same here. Same here. Same here. And if you do six dots multiplied five times, because there's five, that we, I put six here, six here, six here, six here, six here, five times. Six times five is 30. Those are the 30 dots that we had to put in. All right, so now let's go back and look at the other examples we're doing. I'll just start down here with BCl3. So you have B. You're going to put a Cl here and here and here. If you add the valence electrons, boron, remember, had three. We did, no, I didn't do boron, so here's boron. Boron is here. It's got three valence electrons. And uh, chlorine, it has seven valence electrons. So I put a seven over here. I multiply it by three because there are three atoms. Now I know I'm going kind of fast, but remember with YouTube, you can rewind me. All right, so three plus seven times three equals 24 valence electrons. Now, of the 24, I have two, four, six in the picture. So I'm going to take away six. And then I have 18 electrons left to put in. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And that makes eight there. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's eight around this chlorine. One, two, three, four, five, six. So all of the chlorines now have eight around them. The boron doesn't. However, and normally you'd want it to, except that for boron, remember we said a minute ago, it's happy with six. So the boron is happy. The smiley face is really not part of the dot diagram. All right, now, this, this is as far apart as these bonds can get from each other. So uh, what we need to do then is uh, just consider it's going to be a flat molecule because there's nothing up on top to push it down. There's nothing down below to push, push anyway. They just, this is as far apart as these bonds can get. Now, why do they want to be as far apart as they can get? It's because they repel each other, because they're negative, 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 because they want to be as far apart from each other as they can. All right, so now we look at the electrons. They're going to be pulled toward the more electronegative element, which is here and here and toward the chlorine. So now you've got these ropes. The whole thing's flat and um, you're pulling evenly on them. So these uh, charge vectors are going to cancel. And if the charge vectors all cancel, then the molecule is nonpolar. So that one is a nonpolar molecule. All right, now the next diagram we're going to draw is NH3. So you'd add up the valence electron. You got five. You got one times three. Because hydrogen only has one electron. Nitrogen has five. Uh, you, can, you can see it here on the periodic table. Nitrogen is five and hydrogen is one. So I've got a total of eight valence electrons. So you set up your skeleton structure and put your H in here like this, like this. Take away six, so I have two electrons still to put in. But I can't put them on the hydrogens because the hydrogen is happy with how many? Two. So the hydrogens are already happy. They don't want any more. And the, uh, for those of you who are uh, more, uh, more curious about this, the uh, reason is that the hydrogen, if you write the electron configuration, it's 1s1. 
And the first energy level only holds two electrons, so having one more electron makes a 1s2, and then that is full for that particular energy level. So hydrogen's outside energy level is full when it only has two electrons. All right, so since the two electrons are left over, they have to go on the nitrogen, which is okay because now the nitrogen has two, four, six, eight, and that's what it wanted anyway. It'd like to have eight. Most things want eight around them. Now the shape, however, the shape is going to change because of that. All right, so the, if, since I have these two electrons up on top, it's like they repel or push down the lines that you see coming out. So the, the shape then will kind of be like this. It'll make a little pyramid. And there'll be a pair of electrons up above, like right up here. So it'll be a little pyramid. And so the molecule becomes a, what we call a pyramidal shape or a pyramidal shape. So it's going to look like this. So in, in three dimensions like that. All right, so that's the shape. Now, the electrons then are going to be pulled toward the more electronegative element, so they're going to go toward the nitrogen, because if you look at the periodic table, you see nitrogen's further to the right than hydrogen is, so the electrons are going to go toward the nitrogen, like this. All right, so are these vectors going to cancel? I don't think so, because these vectors are all pointing up toward the top of this little pyramid. So if I have people all pushing down here in that direction, the pyramid would go up, it would rise. So this molecule will be polar because those vectors don't cancel each other out. All right, I'm gonna do one more example. Now, to, um, yeah, one more example. So SO2, would we'll do it, so that's six, and six times two is 12, equals 18 valence electrons. And once again, all oxygen's here, sulfur's here. Um, put the S in the middle, put the O here, put the O here. Now we take away, of those 18, we take away four, so we have 14 left to put in, 14. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and I filled up that oxygen, because it only needs eight, and it's two, four, six, and these two make eight. Then put six over here, and that makes that oxygen have eight, so far, I've put in 12 of the 14, so I still have two more to put in. I could put them on the sulfur. But I have a problem with this because my sulfur doesn't have enough electrons around it. It needs two more right here. So it's too short. So if you think back to the video where I gave you the rules about how to draw, di draw dot diagrams, um, this guy is two electrons short. So if you're too short, you have to start over and add a double bond. So I'm going to draw it this way because I know what's going to happen. I'll show you in a minute. So you have 18, 2, 4, 6, take away 6, gives you 12. And those 12 electrons then will be distributed like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Notice that you only need 4 on this oxygen now because you already had 4 in the picture. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, but I had 12 dots to put in, so the last two go above the sulfur. So why does it bend? And that's because these guys push those guys down. So now the arrows are going to go toward a more electronegative element, like that. So they're not going to cancel each other out because they're not pulling straight out. They're pulling in this direction. And when that's going to make this sulfur move in that direction overall. So that molecule will be polar because the vectors do not cancel. Okay. Uh, just real quick, if you drew water, you'll find water looks like this. And you might think that this is a better picture for water, but it's not because that angle is 90 degrees. But if you go into three dimensions, you can get bigger than 90 degrees, and that's why water bends. It's also why water molecules stick to each other so well, because they are bent like this, and so they attract each other. And there's another reason that I'm running out of time in the video. It's getting too long. So I'll tie that in you know, on, on another day. Now, the last thing I was going to do was take, in this little video is give you a couple of examples. I want you to do a little practice. And I put a couple links for practice up here. And that's this link. I might also mention in a video that I made the other day, that looks like this. Remember I typed all the rules out for you? 
PF5 right here. Elect electrons. So there, so you might want to review those rules that I typed for you in the video that I made uh, last time. It was on Monday. Okay, so we'll close that up. And then this is what you're going to practice on. This requires Flash Player. Your Chromebooks should run Flash, uh, but you might have to tell it to allow Flash. All right, so you've got this little thing right here. You want to consider the highlighted bond. That's this one. You have to look for that yellow. And you want to click on the more electronegative atom. So that's going to be this atom. Then you would submit that, and that'll be right. And you go to the next question, and it's going to ask you to do that again. So you submit it, and it's going to ask you to do that again. And you're going to submit the more electronegative element. And then you can drag this little arrow around. So if the vectors don't charge, don't cancel, then you're going to point that arrow in the same way that I pointed the arrow here. But if they do cancel, then you just put nonpolar molecule. So in this case, since there's no electrons around the boron to cause it to be in a pyramid, those vectors are going to cancel because it's flat. It's like the one we drew over here, BCL3. So we're going to call that a nonpolar molecule because the vectors cancel, and poof, we got it right. So I want you to practice on that, and I'm going to make another little video that tells you how to determine these shapes. So I'll get to that in a few minutes.